Okay, in this video, you probably want to paint while you listen to this video. Actually, what I want to start doing is I want to start creating videos while you paint so you have something to learn and educate yourself while you're working on that art piece of yours. But this one, you definitely going to want to paint. We might be here for a minute because I have some very, very important stuff to talk to you about. I think you can get a lot of value from and it could potentially change your art career. So just for those who probably don't want to watch this video, I'm going to kind of talk about like what I'm going to be discussing right now. So basically, I want to talk about like the biggest problem in the art space that's causing literally millions of visual artists to struggle. And I'm going to talk about also how you could break out of that and then start having success. I kid you not, for the last four or five videos, I've been having this one little bird that I come, maybe that's a thing. But seriously, I'm going to talk about the main, main problems in the visual art space and how we come together as one and overcome those problems for like ultimate success, like ultimate success. So for me to get into this first, I'm gonna um I wanna share something. So overall, 2023 probably was the best year of my life, especially for the business. Ironically, I I, I can assume the year was so good that the very last day of 2023, December 31st, New Year's Eve. I got into a motorcycle accident at 60 miles an hour and broke my foot, third degree road rash, some um, bruised bones, things like that. But maybe it was just too good of a year, so something had to give, right? <laughs> but seriously, 2023 was a phenomenal year overall. And what made that year so phenomenal is that we started working with a lot of new artists. At this point, we almost had a thousand artists that we have inside of our program, which is phenomenal. Like we write under 900, which is once again, phenomenal. And I'm very grateful for that. And here's the thing, going through 2023 and working with so many artists and helping so many artists succeed while being isolated at my home majority of the time, I was able to see a lot of things. A lot of questions started coming up a lot of concerns, a lot of improvements, but I started to learn a lot about the artists we were working with and the artists that wanted to work with us. And I realized like overall, there was one key problem. Honestly, it's not probably not even one, like one overall problem, but it was so many little things that led to this problem. And we're gonna, and we're gonna like actually discuss this here. So here's the thing, before I get into all the nitty gritty details, cause there's a lot I'm gonna talk about. My name is Draw Henry. If you don't know who I am, I created um, a company called Artist Rise, so we educate visual artists specifically. That's it. And this started in 2019, and luckily, growing to today with the, um, on the help of you guys, it's become pretty successful. At least I like to say, and I'm very, very proud of that. But now I want to take this opportunity to like give back and things like that, which is why we started to be way more consistent on this YouTube channel. So let's get into it. Once again, you probably want to pick up that paintbrush because that's a lot we're going to talk about. But here's the thing. What a lot of visual artists don't understand is why artists don't succeed. And we often call like starving artists as if we're the problem, but you're really not. It's not your fault as far as why we're not succeeding. The problem actually lie much, much, much deeper deeper and I'm going to get into this. So here's the thing. The problem in the visual art space as a whole is how we, I guess I could say like how we kind of like always had an outlook on visual arts. I'm going to give an example. What I noticed is that a lot of artists struggle with like mindset, self-confidence. They have a lot of self-doubt. But imagine trying not to have lack of confidence when every single person around you tell you that being a visual artist is not a full-time career or you can't be a um, visual artist. You see, but the problem is when you have people looking from the outside in, it's hard for them to see the opportunity they may lie on the inside. So what do we need? We need to come together as a community so we could build each other. So which I'm gonna talk about this in detail. Matter of fact, let me ask you this. 
name another industry that's doing well where the people in that industry are not moving together as a community. I'll give you an example. Like when you think about fitness, everybody in the fitness, they come together like a big movement, like a family, like a community. When people go to the gym, they like, hey, what's going on? They wear gym clothes outside the gym. They support very heavily. They have like certain clothing brands. You have people like doing specific things specifically for gyms. It's like freaking amazing because they have an actual community. They come together as one under one love, which is being able to work out and get in shape. That's the same thing with just about everything. For example, even like the trading space. I don't know nothing about trading, but if you ever go on Instagram and you look at people who trade, they move together as a community, as a family, as one. They're very supportive and encouraging and they push one another. And then the cool thing is also in that community, trading is a very, very hard space to succeed in, but it's no one pushing, putting each other down and they have no outsiders putting each other down. And the reason is because when that community in the inside becomes so strong, it outweighs the outside voices. So the problem in the visual art space is that we don't really have no community in the visual art space. So the outside voices outweigh the voices in our own heads as a community, if this makes sense. So what needs to happen first and foremost, artists need to come together more as one as a family. Like visual arts is one of the only spaces I see in the arts where collaborating is not common. It's very rare to see two visual artists collaborate on one project together. However, if you look at any other space, whether that's music, dance, poetry, it don't matter. Like people are collaborating and working together. Right. And another thing with that is just also having that support system, having other artists sound like you freaking rock and you could earn this and you could do this. Like right now as a company, we run ads on Instagram. You've probably seen them if you're here. But we realize so many artists are just commenting on those ads and saying negative things once again, not because they might be a negative person, but it's because they don't have that confidence themselves. So what's the goal? The goal is basically to like reframe this entire visual art space. And to do that, we have to kind of like throw out old habits and bring in new habits. So basically, like we have to reprogram our entire brain. And that's what I want to talk to you about is basically being able to reprogram your entire brain. And I'm explaining why we need to reprogram our entire brain. So ever since growing up, you've probably been told being a visual artist is just not a real career. Maybe you should do something that's more sustainable. Maybe you should do something that's more reliable. And then what happens is we pursue those more sustainable, more reliable, um, I guess you would say jobs. Now, the problem is that the people we take in advice from are ignorant. Now, what do I mean by ignorant? Ignorant is just a lack of education in a specific field. What I mean by this is if someone come to tell me about business, Right. Or growing a company, but they never had a company before themselves. I ever even thought about starting a business. It would be ignorant of me to take advice from them because it's most likely that they're ignorant about this particular topic. And what happens is this go on in our family. So we'll have friends and family members and associates that say, oh, no, don't do that. Don't do that because you won't succeed. But they ignorant to the ideal of doing so because they never was able to pursue that themselves. Because they're not a visual artist. They never thought about being a visual artist. They never thought about painting, picking up a paintbrush, or selling the artwork. So what happens is they're telling you advice from the heart, which is genuine advice. But just because the advice you may receive is genuine, don't necessarily mean it's accurate. So what am I saying? First thing first, we need to reprogram our brain. And it starts with educating ourselves on what is accurate. And I'm going to talk about what's accurate in this video here. So first thing first, what's accurate? This happens every time. What's accurate is that you can become a full-time artist. Why do I say so? Because what's one of the biggest careers currently? That's the ability to start a business and succeed. And it's one of the most profitable careers. It's starting a business and being able to succeed. However, when you're a visual artist, being a visual artist is no different than starting any other business. 
as a visual artist, the only difference is that your artwork become your product. Just like a fashion designer, the clothes become their product. Just like somebody who started a business selling, I don't know, Girl Scout cookies, the cookies become a product. The only difference is that as a visual artist, your visual art becomes your product. Once your visual art becomes your product, understand that you're a business person. I've been talking about this more recently in the last few videos. As a business person, you need to think like a business person. And when you think like a business person, you get business people outcomes, which means actual success. So I'm saying this to say it's much e not easier, but it's much more lucrative to be a business person, a.k.a. a visual artist, than it is to pursue some random career that you're not passionate about. Now, once again, I'm not saying it's easy, but if you can master it, it's much more lucrative. So now when people say like, oh, are you a starving artist? Absolutely not, because the pursuit, the route I'm pursuing, I have more, um, I have a more, what's the word I'm looking for? Help me out. I have a higher chance of like, earning a higher and better income as long as I take the right processes and the right steps to succeed then you may do going into school to become a nurse by the way like for God's sake I had an artist last year did almost actually not almost did over 700,000 in sales and that's our sales as a photographer at that so first thing first, I guess the main thing I'm trying to get you to understand is that when you start to look at your artwork and your art career as a business and a product, it changes your entire outlook on what success looks like as a visual artist because you understand at that point that success is no different than succeeding in any other business field. Which is why we have some artists like Damien Hurst that's worth a billion dollars. Now, we still in that reframing free. Um, we still in that reframing. What's the word? I'm all over the place today. We still in that reframing section, right? So, in order to have this outlook, we have to also break a couple other um things we've been told as kids that while we was being brought up. Another one of those things is that the reason why we're called struggling, starving artists is because those who love us thought you couldn't succeed as a visual artist. And then once we listen to that, because we hear so. Um, often over and over and over again, we start to believe it. And when we start to believe it, the unfortunate part is that we start to gain self-doubt and lack of confidence. So now that we start to reframe our brain and understand being a visual artist is no different than any other business style field, then you have to work on like reframing your confidence. If somebody wants to start a business, you have to be very confident that your business will succeed. How do you gain confidence? Is by seeing others that succeed. So what you want to do is look at and be very, very aware when you look at these artists, but look at other artists who are having a ton of success and understand that majority of the time, these artists are no different than you. They may have a different styles. They may work on different works, but overall, the concept to success remains the same. I mean, for once again, God's sake, in today's time, majority of visual artists that's finding a lot of success is finding it through social media. I have artists right now that's freaking 20 years old, like MJ, MJ Realism, who grew from 2,000 followers to almost 500,000, and now he's considered a successful artist, and he most likely will be in business and have a lucrative art career for the rest of his life while he's still in school studying engineering. And one thing he always says is that, he's like, man, I'm gonna finish school because I wanna make my parents proud, and I told him I was gonna finish school. But he was like, I have no intentions on being an engineer anymore. Why? Because this young kid is now doing 20,000 months selling his artwork, doing what he actually passionate about. So what I'm saying is to build that confidence, you have to surround yourself with success, with success. And surrounding yourself with success, not always the easiest. So if you can't surround yourself physically with success, you want to surround yourself with success at least online. So for example, when I was growing up, I actually, once I left art school, I was sleeping on the floor and everybody around me was poor because we grew up in poverty. Growing up in poverty and seeing so much failure, it automatically caused you to lose confidence. But understand that at my computer, I had the entire world at my fingertips. 
So all the YouTube videos I watched was of successful business people. All the Instagram pages I was following was of successful business people. And then as I started to see success so often, it made me realize, like, holy crap, if these people could do it, why wouldn't I be able to do it? Because the reality is these people is no different than myself. Now, obviously, probably had a different education that allowed them to get there. But maybe that's just what I need to start. I need to start with transitioning the things I've learned, right? I need to start with reprogramming my brain and re-educating myself so I could get the right information. I'm going to take a pause here. Once again, I want this to really make sense to you. Like, my only goal here is to provide as much value as humanly possible. But what happened was, and the reason I'm making this video is in 2023, as I mentioned, very in the very beginning of this video, where a lot of artists who did extremely well, a lot of success, and the business did extremely well. And then I decided to host one-to-one -one calls with the artists I work with. Just to kind of like see if they had any questions or anything we could do that we wasn't doing. And on the one-to-one -one calls, I realized the number one reason the visual artist I was working with was not succeeding. Like those who was like making less than 3000 a month, it came down to lack of confidence. It came down to mindset. It came down to self-doubt. And then when I dug into this much, much deeper, it was because they didn't feel like they have a strong enough support system whether that was in the community we had or in their personal life. It was because they had a bad relationship with money because their family always told them they couldn't make a lot of money doing what they love. And if they did make money, it was very negative. It was a bad thing. It was a sin. So the reason I'm creating this video is because I understand that like if we really want to succeed, like if you really, 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 really want to succeed, I'm going to put all the information here for you to learn it and apply it and crush it on this YouTube channel. Because I know, once again, because as visual artists, we do not have a community. There is not many people teaching visual artists how to succeed. This will goes back to the example I gave with fitness. You search up anything about fitness on YouTube, you're going to find a freaking million videos. But the minute you search how to sell artwork, maybe, what, 10 so it, once again, we're here to change that right in this moment. And that's the goal. The goal is to change that. So once again, I'm going to provide a lot of educational stuff on this channel, but we have to change our brain first before we go learn the information we need to succeed. And that's what we're talking about. So once again, I say once again like 10 times, but once again, for the 11th time, we have to start with the mindset and reprogram our brain. Therefore, we can find success. We we'll reprogram our brain and understand that you can succeed and you should be confident in your work and you should stand behind what you really want to do, which is paint and make a full time living from painting. And as long as you do that, then you can take the next steps, which is taking the action to um, achieve that, which is through education. And on this channel, I'm going to provide the education that you need to succeed. So, with that being said, here's what we need to do. First, there's a couple things I'm going to touch on that needs to change as far as outlooks. And once we could change these outlooks, we could put a strategy in place to like really crush it. It's that simple. So first thing first, understand that we've always been told that you need galleries to succeed as a visual artist. And in today's time, that's just not true. You see, what happened was back in the day, let's say eight, nine years ago, galleries were very lucrative because social media wasn't as powerful as it is today. So the best way to get in front of your ideal customers were through social media. Basically, I'm sorry, were through galleries, were through galleries. Basically, if I wanted to sell my artwork, the gatekeeper was the gallery. If I get my artwork in a gallery on their wall, most likely an ideal buyer walk into that gallery and purchase my artwork. Because people that wanted to buy art, they usually go to galleries. But now in today's time, those same people that are typically walking to that gallery to purchase the artwork, they're also online. They're on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok. So now, instead of me having to put my artwork on the, in a gallery to get my artwork seen, I could literally just put it online as long as I understand exactly how to. 
And not only once I put it online, I could get it seen. If I do this properly, I could get it seen by way, 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 way more people and change my entire art career moving forward. I have an artist right now named Alexis Aaliyah. Alexis Marie. I apologize. Come, come. I'm mixing two artists together. So Alexis Marie. And by the way, you should check out her artwork. But Alexis Marie, what happened was she had a video on Instagram get 5.5 million views. Do me a do me a favor, Catherine, and um put that video here on the screen for everybody to see. I'll take a screenshot. Sorry, sorry about go check it out afterwards. So Alexis Marie ended up um having a video get 5.5 million views. From that video, she went on to sell $23,000 worth of art. The cool part is because we no longer have to worry about galleries being a gatekeepers, not only was she able to make $23,000 at art sales, but she also was able to keep 100% of the profit. So this is why galleries are no longer important or needed. And by the way, I got my notes here like always, so we're going to talk about it. Second, Every artist I talk to, they feel like I need a website. A website is also something that just simply not needed or it's, it's not as important. Now, what do I mean by this? Should you have a website? Yes, it do make you look more professional, but do you need it to sell your work? Absolutely not. I have some artworks that do not, some artworks. I have some artists that do not have a website and literally backed up for about two years on ourselves. I have artists right now named Danielle Brown who once again backed up for two years on sales, two years, but she do not have a website. Why? Once again, because of the power of social media, right? But you may be wondering, but Joy, how would I make a sale even if I have social media if I don't have a website? In today's time, social media becomes your website. When somebody wanna learn something about a product, they go on your social media. And your product in this case will be your artwork. And then on your social media, if they're interested in purchasing, they'll just send you a message. And then when you're selling artwork, having a direct conversation with a potential buyer is way more lucrative because when you sell artwork, art has no actual value. It's all about perceived value. And that perceived value is built through the reasoning behind why that artwork was created. And the best way to communicate that why with a buyer is through a direct one-to-one -one conversation. So at that point in conversation, you're more likely to one, sell the artwork and then two, sell it at a higher price point. I could go deeper into this stuff in a later video, but I just want you to understand why I don't want you to hold yourself up trying to get the perfect website when you could be selling. Make sense? Cool. And then last, not last, but next is the art. Uh, <laughs> Oh my God, this is one of the craziest ones. Here's the thing, if you're a visual artist, understand your art is your product. And yes, some people products in business is better than other people products. So what do you want? You want for your product, which is your artwork to be the best product. Now, that don't necessarily mean changing your style, but you have to work on improving every single time you decide to pick up that paintbrush, that camera, that drawing pencil, whatever the case may be. You have to think about how can you push the envelope further. And the cool thing is I already created a video about how to create better artwork. So just check that out. Watch that video. But you want to be thinking, like, how can I actually push the envelope further? Like, how can I make the absolute most phenomenal artwork? Because this art is my product. I always say if you create phenomenal artwork, you don't even have to worry about marketing because the work will market itself. And that's very true. So what I'm saying a lot of people throughout your whole life been telling you don't worry about what other people think. Just create what comes from the heart. Just create what make you happy. Unfortunately, what make you happy isn't always the best work. So you want to try to push the envelope. Like you want to try to make the best work just like how music artists try to make the best music. So think about how can you take your artwork even farther. And as long as you always try to take your artwork farther and become better and then eventually try to become the best, you will succeed. But art is almost like a sport or any other art. So what I mean by this, in music, there are music artists who are just better than others, right? In sports, there are sports players who are better than others, even if they play the same exact position. 
And in art, as a visual artist, there are some artworks that's just simply going to be more desirable than others. So you want to think about how can I make my work the most desirable? It's that simple. Once again, we're talking about like reprogramming your brain. And these are some of the big things that needs to change. Last is finances and money. You always been told you shouldn't worry about how much money you make. Money is not important. If you're a visual artist, you do it because you love it and you're passionate about it, not because you should be worried about how much money you make. And I think that's one of the most ridiculous things I've ever heard. The way this even came about is that galleries started off telling visual artists they shouldn't worry about how much money they make. How? But here's the thing. If the gallery tell you you shouldn't worry about how much money you make, the question is why would they tell you this? Because the less you worry about how much money you make, the more the gallery get the profit. Don't worry about how much money you make because it's just going to allow you to create artwork full time and you're going to love it. And next thing you know, now galleries are trying to charge 60 and 70%. Think about it. If how much money I make not that important, right? As, as the galleries say, why is the gallery trying to charge 50, 60, and 70%? If it's not that important, why don't you guys just charge 30% or 20%? Because industry standard in any type of commission-based field is 10%. But why are you charging me 70%? Like, you have to think about this. Well, they understand if you're not worried about money, the more money they get to worry, the more they get to make because the more they worry about it. And then what happens is we start to believe this because of how they say it, it sounds so good. And the next thing you know, we're starting to say it ourselves. Like, you shouldn't worry about how much money you make if you're really passionate. I love creating art. So how much money I make is not the biggest deal to me. When it should be because the only way this world go round and round is because of income. Like, think about it. If you don't make money, then how you be um, plan on providing for your family? That's, like, very important. You want to give your kids the best education. You want to be able to eat the most healthiest foods. You want to be able to take the vacations that you should and you so deserving of taking when you want to take them. But in order to do all these cool things, you have to have the finances. So, yes, your finances are extremely important. It's one of the most important things because it's most of the, I'm sorry, because most of the time people stress what they're stressing about. They're stressing about their finances. So. Don't worry about galleries because now we have social media to succeed. You don't need a website. If somebody really loves your artwork, they're not going to care if you have the most professional website or not if they really resonate with the piece. And third, if you're going to create artwork, try to create the best artwork because your art is your product and people want to purchase a great product, especially if they spend a top dollar on that product. And then four, your income is important as a visual artist because as a visual artist, that is a career just like being a doctor, lawyer, or any other career out there. So you should worry about how much money you earn. Now, starting once again with this reprogramming, we're going to regain confidence and we're going to move together as a movement. I want this channel to become that movement. Artists Rise will become that movement. And that's the only goal we have for 2024. That's why I'm going to make it my duty to provide you guys with as much value as humanly possible on this channel. So when you decide to pick up that paintbrush and you paint in your studio, you put these videos on and you educate yourself. So when you put down that paintbrush, you could go to marketing your work and turning your career into a full time career. That's the goal. When all of this for, in order for this to happen, you have to be able to hold yourself accountable and we have to hold each other accountable. And let's do that. Like, let's start moving as a community, as one. And that's how you really, really, really find success. Like, that's how you really crush it. And that's just where it starts. And as long as we're doing that, we'll crush it. Because I'm going to make it my goal to learn as much as humanly possible so I can spread the wealth of knowledge with you. But then we have to also hold each other accountable. If you're not already subscribed to the channel so you can learn more of this information because I understand that no one is talking about this. And I spent the last six years focusing on studying this one topic and my entire life revolved around art. And now my sole focus is to provide you with as much information as possible to make sure you crush it. With that being said, if you haven't already and you want to better your artwork, watch that video. I'm going to put it somewhere. Oh, I'm, I'm not going to put it. <laughs> But Catherine, give Catherine her credit. She's phenomenal. Catherine will put that video up somewhere here or in the description or something. 
but it's an art, it's a video on how to create really phenomenal art. With that being said, if you really found this valuable, like actually found this valuable, leave a comment below because I just hear it helps the algorithm and I would love to get to know who you are and chat with you directly. And with that being said, I'm going to just see your butt on the next video. Peace.